Hey guys, today we're gonna be looking at a site called Meshi AI, which allows you to type in a text prompt or upload a photograph and it generates a 3D model for you. And you can use these 3D models in so many different ways. Like for instance, you can create an animation like this one. By the way, I'm gonna be dropping a tutorial on my other channel very soon, showing you how I created this animation with the models generated in Meshi. So if you're not subscribed to my other channel, I will link to it down below. Also, if you're into 3D printing, you can use the models generated through Meshi with your 3D printers. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you how it all works. I'm gonna give you my honest review, the good, the bad, and the ugly. This video is not sponsored. I paid for Meshi with my own money. But if you like what you see today, I will drop a link to it down in the description so you can check it out for yourself. All right, let's get into it. So here is the Meshi UI when you sign up for it. And one of the first cool things to look at is that these are models generated by other Meshi AI users that they are making available to other users for download just because, which I do think is very cool. But to create your own Meshi image, you're going to want to head over to Workspace and let's start with text to 3D. And for the cookie animation I showed you at the beginning of this video, I'm going to prompt Meshi to make me another type of cookie. Once I've typed in my prompt, I just hit the generate button. And you can see here on the top right of my screen that my asset is being generated. And I found that this generation takes about two minutes. Now you can see the first output I get from Meshi is an array of black and white images. If I select this array here in the middle of my screen, I get a bigger view of these models with different variations. And in this view, I can kind of spin them around. I can zoom in and take a closer look, but I've noticed I can't rotate these 360 degrees to get an entire view of them. I can really only spin them around here on the X axis. So from here, what you would wanna do is select the cookie you like the best. This one's a little thick. This one is more of a sandwich style and both of these have like crumbs and broken off chips around them, which I don't want. So I am going to modify my prompt and let's see if we get a better result. Okay, so here's my next set of options and kind of frustratingly, I didn't really get much of an improvement. Again, I got a sandwich cookie. Instead of no crumbs, I got more crumbs and I asked for it to be only half a centimeter thick and I got another donut hole. So what I think I'm gonna do is go back to my original generation and let's select this one here and add the texture to it. So to select it, I just click it in my bigger window here. I've got the green box around it. And then I also get this dialog box about confirming the generation. It's asking me what I want my target poly count to be. And the higher the poly count, the larger the file size is going to be. I'm gonna select adaptive and let's move it to high, but not ultra. On topology, it gives you a little bit of a hint about whether or not you should be using quad or triangle. If you think you're gonna take this model into an app like Blender to do further editing, you might wanna select quad. I'm not gonna be doing that, so I'm going to select triangle and let's just hit the confirm button. All right, and here is our cookie. I'm going to select it. And actually, I do think, I mean, it's a little, it's a little of a chubby cookie, but otherwise I think it looks really, really good. And by the way, if you're not seeing this image in your center window like I am, you may need to modify your Google Chrome settings. Just head up to Chrome, Settings, System, and make sure this is toggled on, use graphics acceleration when available. Okay, so now if I wanted to download this, I could just hit this download button and choose my format. And for my personal purposes, I'm going to use a USDZ file and just hit download. So that's the general text to 3D model workflow. Let's try image to 3D model. So all you need to do is drop in a image that you took yourself or pulled off the internet. This is an image of a handbag I got offline and hit the generate button. All right, so here are my purse options. And I feel like with the exception of this bottom right one, these are not bad. I think the clear winner is the bottom left here. You can see the chain is continuous backward and forward, it like physically makes sense. 
Let's select it and hit the confirm button to generate the texture. Okay, here is my bag and you can see it's a little lumpy looking. It's not as sharp as you would want it to be. That chain looks like it came off the bottom of the ocean. So this is the kind of thing I do think you would need to take into another app and tidy up. Let's see what we can do here in Meshi though. So I am going to select this button here for smart healing and I'm going to attempt to clean up this area where it seemed to be confused by the chains on the purse. And so you can select with this triangle tool. I find this to be a little bit hard to use. You can also move to a paintbrush tool and select the areas you want to heal is what they call it. And I don't know if this is gonna work. Let's try it, smart healing. That did seem to do something, didn't I? I think it's an improvement. I'm going to apply it to the model. And once again, we need to generate. Okay, slight improvement there, but the texture on this is very odd. Let's try modifying the texture by hitting the texture button here and let's do a text input. Okay, and I think, you know, again, our model isn't perfect looking, but that was a really pretty good result. Let's take this one step further and select the stylize button here. And we can change the style from either like a sculpture or PBR, which is going to give us more realistic lighting. Let's try that one. And here is the result. I'm not crazy about this. The lighting's actually very interesting, but the bag just looks not great. I do prefer our last version for sure. Now what I wanna do is try to generate a 3D model based on images I took myself. So we set up in our studio this Rubik's cube over a very clean background with very even lighting. I snapped several angles of the Rubik's cube with my iPhone. Let's select image to 3D one more time. So I'm gonna delete out that purse image and I'm going to drag and drop the first image I took myself of the Rubik's cube. And then I'm gonna to toggle on multi view, which is going to allow me to upload three other images of that Rubik's cube. And these are all from different angles. Okay, here are my results. They are not fantastic. <laughs> this is not a Rubik's cube. Oh boy. I'm just, I don't know what to select here. I mean, this one clearly doesn't have the right amount of squares. This one, I guess, looks the most similar. I don't know. I'm going to hit the confirm button. I'm kind of surprised. I thought this would be an easy one. Okay, yeah, this is like the Bizarro Rubik's Cube here. You can see it actually has some holes in it where we can see the inside of the cube. It looks like it's been melted or if it was made by a child out of Play-Doh. Definitely not an accurate representation since this is not great anyway. Let's just have some fun with this. I'm going to head down to the texture option and let's delete this image and I am going to add in some fun textures. Let's try some fur and see what we get. That's actually kind of funny. I thought that the fur might continue up over the sides of the cube but it looks like it's almost more painted on than really that texture. Let's clear this out. And one other thing I think a lot of you guys will be interested in is that you can actually create characters and add animation to them here in Meshi as well. So I'm going to upload this image of a beagle. All right, and I think we got some good results here. The top right and bottom left definitely seem to be preferable. The bottom left does seem to have a lot more texture Let's go with that one and generate it. Interesting, he's a little rough looking in some spots, but not bad. The colors are definitely spot on. Let's select the animate button. And to do anything, first we need to rig the model. So I'm going to hit the rig button and we're supposed to face the dog to the screen left and use the slider to adjust the height so it matches the silhouetted cat here in the shot. I think that looks about right. Let's hit next. And now we need to reposition these markers on the different parts of the dog's body. You're basically indicating to Meshi where the joints of the model are. Okay, here is our dog walking. He looks like he's, I mean, he's walking, but he doesn't look like he's doing so hot. I don't think the walking motion on this is as natural as it could be. And now that I'm even looking at the model that they have as their default, he looks like he's walking a little bit funny too. 
So what do I think about Meshi? I think you won't be surprised to hear that I do think it's a little hit or miss. I think I had great success with my array of cookies, but I can tell you that when I brought these models into Apple Motion, I noticed some imperfections I hadn't noticed while I was in Meshi. For instance, on this pink cookie, I just thought these black dots were just little imperfections in the icing on the cookie. But when I brought it into motion, I could see that they were actually pores all the way through the 3D model. And that was not something I could repair in Meshi. You also saw what terrible results I got with the Rubik's Cube. I genuinely thought taking my own images from different angles of the same object would generate a better result, but this Rubik's Cube was a mess. And surprisingly, I actually got a much, much better result by generating a Rubik's Cube out of a text prompt. You can see this one is perfect. And that led me to run further tests where I generated models from images and then also from text prompts. And you can see from these side-by-sides that every single time the text prompts outperformed the image uploads, though they were not perfect, they still had pores. If you are trying to take a physical object in real life and turn it into a 3D model, I would recommend an app like Polycam 3D, which is an app I've already talked about on this channel, and I'll link to my review of that down below. That is a LiDAR scanner that takes many, 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 many photos of an object as you travel all the way around it and then generates a 3D model out of that. So if that's the workflow you're looking for, I don't think Meshi is your best bet because not only is the image to 3D model generator not amazing, but it only lets you upload four images and it's just not enough. Another thing I've noticed about Meshi is that there's not really a lot of information on here about how to use this very powerful app. They do have a resources tab here on their website. And if you click on the tutorials, you'll see that many of these tutorials are from other creators on YouTube, not Meshi AI themselves. And I do think that a lot of this content is in fact sponsored. In addition, Meshi seems to be hitting the ground running, updating their app. So when you go in here, you'll see a lot of the instructions are actually outdated. The user interface has completely flipped around. And so it was really hard for me to get a good handle on how to use this app to its greatest capabilities. And just like with pretty much any generative AI tool I've ever tried, you can never get exactly, exactly what you want. So if you're just using Meshi for fun or as a hobbyist, then you might be really satisfied with these results. If you are a professional and you need something to look very specific, I do think this is a great starting point, but you're still gonna need to bring your model into an app like Blender and clean it up and make it look exactly how you need it to look. But I do do think this technology is going to continue to improve. So if you want to check it out for yourself, make sure you check out the link down below. Make sure you subscribe to my other channel if you want to see how I created this 3D animation in Apple Motion. You guys, thanks for hanging out. Here's some other videos I think you're going to love. I'll see you again.